and welcome to lesson 39. Dave Hill coming at you with the rhythm guitar course. And uh, thanks for sticking along this far in the program because uh, I know you're getting better and it's starting to pay off and you're really getting around on the guitar and, and you really know your chords now. But keep practicing hard. It's going to pay off in the long run. Okay, we're going to talk about variations of chords today that I think are really important to bring up. And that's the sound that I'm going to play right now. Okay, keep listening while I play some of these chords. How about this chord? Or even this one right here. Or perhaps this one. In this kind of chord. Okay, what's going on with all these chords that, that are consistent and also unique and, and interesting? Well, let's examine one of the simple ones here. How about this one right here? Um, okay, you might be going, well, it kind of looks like he's holding a C root, and I can see that he's play, also playing a G. Right? But there's, at the same time, there's also a D in the chord. In fact, there's two Ds the way that I'm playing it. Okay. So what would you call a chord that has a root, a fifth, and a ninth? Well, let's look back at our board right here. Okay, root, fifth, and ninth. Here's, here's a little insight. When you have a chord where there's no third, and there's been a note that's replaced replace the third, we call that suspended. Usually what happens is you suspend the third up to the up to the fourth, and you call it a sus four. And we'll talk about that in other lessons, but what we're doing today is we're suspending the third down to the ninth, or the second, because the ninth is also the same as the second. Nine, or one, two, second. So that's what you'd call a chord that has root, fifth, and nine, you call it a sus two or a sus nine, okay? And these are good chords when you wanna have the sound of a major or even perhaps a minor chord, but you don't wanna have it obvious to the ear that it's major or minor because you don't have a third. So you might have these kinds of, these kinds of chords right here, or maybe even this. Okay, that's a one, nine, and five. So there's an ambiguous quality, which means it's not clear what it is. It's, it's undefined, but it can be in the context, you could hear it as major or minor. Okay, now there's other types of chords where you add a tone. Okay, and then you, in this case, we have add nine chords. So what you have is a complete triad. In this case, you have a one, three, five triad, but you also add the ninth. Okay. So that's different than sus9 or sus2. Add 9 means that it's a complete triad, 1, 3, 5, or any, any uh, order of, of 1, 3, 5. It could be 3, 5, 1, 5, 1, 3, but you have the 9, and then it's called an add 9. And it could also be a minor add 9. So you could have, let's say, C minor, and you add the 9, and you get C minor add 9. Okay, so you can see all the chords that I'm referring to over here on our board, okay? In this case, the chord that I was just talking about, C minor add nine is, it looks like a minor triad like this, but I take the, the extra root right here and I stretch it out and I put the ninth right here. So I've only got one root, here's the fifth, there's the ninth, and there's the minor third. And the minor, the third has to be there for it to be called minor or major, in this, in this case it's minor though, and it's an add nine right there. So they're kind of hard chords to play if you don't have good stretching capabilities. But that's much more colorful than a straight minor chord, where you basically just have the one, three, five. Okay, so they're useful in a lot of situations. Okay, here's a, here's a, a major add nine with a root on the sixth string. Okay, once again, a big stretch because essentially you have one, five, nine, which is also the same as another fifth. It's one, a fifth, and then another fifth. So that makes for a big stretch. OK, 
Okay, and then the third is this note right here. So that could be major. Or if you want to make it minor, you could bring this note down a half step and then you've got a minor add nine on the bottom uh, root as well. Okay? And you can even take this minor add nine here and you can make it a major add nine, nine, but here's what you have to do. You have to reverse these two fingers to get this happening. Right? So it's like this major triad becomes this. If you want to make it an add nine. In this case, C major add nine. Okay? Now you can also give your hand a rest there if you want and imply the ninth without having the third in there, and then you have a simpler form where it's a sus two. That, chord we talked about. There's no third at all, it's just one, five, one, nine. So that's what this is. That's a sus two, okay? It, it implies major, but it could also imply minor, because if it depends on the situation. If you have a minor chord, right? It sounds like it's, it's part of the minor progression, right? But let's say you had a song where you hear the first chord is a major. Listen, listen to this. You might recognize this. Okay. So in this case, that this chord is implying a major sound. So there's a lot of. Um, a lot of capability with these chords because they, they're ambiguous so you can plug them in in a diatonic chord progression and they can, they can imply the diatonic position of the chord in, in the quality that it would be but it can be still ambiguous in the color. Okay, um, and then uh, we also have one other chord I wanted to write out and I'll show you right now. We have a chord where you could put the once again, a sus two. So you could put the root here. You could have the, the two right here. And then you could have the fifth right here. And then the two again on the top. So it kind of is close to this shape right here of a major triad. But what you're doing is taking this note, which is the third, and bringing it down to the ninth. And then you're keeping the fifth where it would have been anyway. And then you add one more ninth at the top. So you've actually basically got one, nine, five, nine. So that's a kind of a neat chord too. Right? Sounds major, but only because I'm hearing it as major. If I was playing a minor chord. I'm sorry, let me do it like this. you feel it as a minor sound even though there's no third of any kind in there so it just depends on the context okay so one of the most classic examples of this uh, these kinds of sounds and these kinds of chords uh, are from uh, the English group or most of the members two of the three um, being English was uh, the band the police that that came to uh, popularity by late 70s early 80s and pretty much reigned the king of pop and rock music through the 80s and before they broke up in the late 80s, I believe. So their power of their songwriting came a lot to do in, uh, in the sense of the, the great songwriting of, uh, of Sting and the other members of the band and the original musicianship of, the, of each of the players. And Andy Summers was the guitar player in that band and he used a lot of these kinds of chords he played. And uh, it just created a very unique, colorful sound with a band that only had three musicians in it. So we're gonna go through one of their tunes today, or kind of a, an abbreviated version of one of their biggest tunes that utilized all these kinds of chords.